Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidate interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Shell Gross, and I would like to introduce Victoria Fieger, who is running for the State Assembly in District 79. As we begin, please tell our viewers what educational, occupational, and civic experiences you have that qualify you for this office, including your experience working with diverse communities. All right, um, so I was born and raised actually in Madison, Wisconsin. I grew up on the east side and then I currently live in Wanakee, which is just outside of um, the Madison area. Um, I went to Madison East High School and um, I actually was a teen mom. So I ended up in the school age maternity program, which is across from, well, it used to be Meritor Hospital, now Unity Point, but the Longfellow building is where they had the school age maternity program. And then um, through them, I uh, got a job through the work and learn program at WPS Insurance and then ended up graduating and then uh, getting a degree actually through working at WPS where they paid for my computer programming degree. So I got an associate degree in computer programming. And from there, I decided that um, while that was easy, I did computers because they were easy for me. So I was blessed that way, um, but I didn't feel like I was really helping anyone. So I went back to school for nursing. So I had an associate degree in nursing. And then I um, got my bachelor's degree and my master's as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, just graduating this last August. Um, and so in terms of my work and diverse communities, I my first job was at Sandridge uh, up in Mauston working with uh, sexual predators, mostly pedophiles that had been filed under a chapter 980. Um, and then as well, we had chapter 971. So patients that were guilty by reason of mental um, illness. or um, So we, we took care of those patients there as well at, at Sandridge just because we were using the space up um, you know, trying to use the space. And from there, then I uh, left to work at Beloit Community um, Health Center, and that is a federally qualified health care facility. And there I worked with, um, you know, the community, people that were challenged, part of the federally qualified dollars to help with drug addiction, um, you know, mental health issues. And then currently I'm working at Waukesha um, full-time as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. And then I also will be working with the comprehensive community services, the CCS program. So, and that's my experience. Thank you. What specific changes would you support to ensure voters are able to cast their ballots and have confidence in the outcome of elections? What experiences have you had with election administration that inform your response? Um, well, I think that it's important people have confidence in our elections. And I think that one of the ways that they do that is, um, I think the rhetoric needs to stop. I think we need to really get to the heart of the issues of how, rather than finger pointing at each other and, and sort of these identity politics really look at what is going on, how can we help voters have confidence and how can we ensure access to voting? I mean, we do not want people disenfranchised from voting. So we need to work hard to make sure that everybody is able to cast a ballot, but I think that we also want to feel confident that those ballots are valid ballots and how do we work together to make sure that that happens. In terms of my experience, I'll be honest, I, I don't, I've personally never been a poll worker. Um, you know, obviously it, it, that would be important, I think, to understand the process, but I certainly do know people that have been a part of that process. And I think that what I've seen is you know, Wisconsin residents who are volunteering to do that genuinely care about the elections. And I think that they need to be supported. And I would be opening open to listening to anyone that had any experience or feedback that could help me make a better informed decision. Because if there's one thing as a candidate or, you know, should I become in the legislator is I'm not going to make any moves without having information. So I'm I'm just conservative in that way. And then that's you know, why I'm on the side of the ticket that I am, because I'm conservative. I'm gonna get information. I wanna make an informed decision and I wanna be able to articulate that to my constituents. So I'm gonna look to them to help me be informed and to make good decisions. Cause it's not just my decision, it's everyone's decision because it affects everyone, so. Thank you. Do you think Wisconsinites have adic adequate access to affordable healthcare services? including reproductive health and abortion care. 
what should be the legislature's role? Well, I think um, that we should all have access to affordable health care, but I think the system's very complicated and it's been somewhat monopolized by, I think, certain sectors. And I think one thing that's been disappointing for me as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner it was, was Governor Evers' vetoing of the APRN Modernization Act. I really think that that would have opened up a lot of um, practices for nurse practitioners to function independently and offer services at a lesser cost. We can do those roles at, at a less cost, spending more time with patients. Patients are much more complicated. They're just much more complicated and we need time with them. And uh, we need to stop churning it out like it's a business and it needs to be about um, taking care of the patient, putting the patient first. And unfortunately, I don't think that, that um, sadly, I don't think that was done with that um, vetoing of the APRN uh, Modernization Act, which was passed both by the legislator and the Senate. Um, so um, in terms of access to uh, healthcare, reproductive rights, abortion, I think we want to make sure that patients are getting the safest care that they can get that they're being well informed about the decisions they're making. Um, making reproductive decisions have lifelong impacts, whether you choose to be a parent or choose not to be a parent. I personally have experience as that as being a 17 year old young girl pregnant and in giving birth to my daughter. So I understand the struggle that can happen on either side of that issue. And I think it's important that we are supporting patients in those decisions and giving them access and, um, you know, and my role as a PMHMP is, is, is supporting patients in tough decisions, healthcare wise. Um, that's in part why I picked PMHMP because I think no matter what happens to you physically, you also have to deal with it mentally and incorporate that into your life. And um, so I would really probably work again hard to get that APRN Act passed and work to ensure that um, we do have affordable healthcare for Wisconsin residents. What do you think is required to improve outcomes for students in public schools, including those with disabilities? As a legislator, what would you do to advance these measures? So you're asking about improving outcomes for students, particularly those with disabilities. Um, I mean, I think that what's most important for anyone who's struggling regardless of the disability, if it's physical or mental, is they need to feel that they can have an impact on the world, that, that, not, that not everything is lost, that um, ensuring that we have, that teachers have the support so that they're not stressed out taking care of these people. Because I think teachers were my solace uh, growing up in sort of a chaotic life. Um, I found solace in my fourth grade teacher, Mr. Smith, um, and, uh, you know, the, the support staff. So I think when we take care of the people who are taking care of the people, then we can offer more to the students and particularly those with disabilities is trying to include everyone and helping them see their value in the world. What that looks like from a legislative standpoint, I'm not exactly sure other than to ensure that our schools are, are financially supported so that our teachers aren't stressed out and feeling like they can't take care of the students and provide good education um, and really get the politics out of our, our school system that way. It's about taking care of kids. It's about helping them elevate. It's about helping them contribute to the world, regardless of their disability or status as a human being, helping them see their value. And I think that that's just really important. And how we do that as a legislator, I think what I bring to that is my own personal experiences again and helping people see how we help people level up from you know unfortunate circumstances to be contributing members of society that can live a fulfilling life. Thanks. What specific strategies do you support for ensuring clean water for all Wisconsinites? I, I think this is just a huge topic. I mean, water's the life source of everything. And I think in terms of strategies, I think we need to start looking at how is our water not clean? Why is that occurring? Who's responsible for that? How do we ensure that they have the resources and the, the means necessary to make sure that, that our waters, A, aren't being more polluted and B, are being able to be cleaned up and, um, you know, making sure that they have access to that water and maybe that entails infrastructure. I mean, I don't know sort of like, what do the pipes look like that are transporting this water? Do we need to consider, you know, improving our infrastructure? I mean, water is just a, it's a, it's a right. Everyone should have access to clean water. And I just, for me, that's just super important. And um, 
I think that we need to ensure that that's happening in terms of strategies. Again, I'd have to get my arms around the issue of why isn't this occurring? I don't want to assume that corporations don't want to do the right thing. I think that corporations hopefully do want to do the right thing, but I think we also need to figure out how to support them so that they are able to make those decisions and they're not just putting profit before people. Um, I think that's important, but I also think it's important that these corporations, they offer jobs to everybody. They're, they are contributing members to society as well. And I think sort of balancing those two issues and trying to figure out how do we make sure that our water does stay clean? How do we support that for corporations and, and um, for people? So that would that's my answer to that question. What legislation would you support to see the guns no longer get into the hands of those who would do harm with them? Well, I'll be honest, I think that's a complicated issue. I think the research I did on it, it was actually the Americans um, Civil Liberties Union that actually stopped um, the uh, what they considered discrimination when they were looking at people who are mentally incapable of holding guns, they argued that that was sort of discrimination against them. So I think the problem is, is there's these two factions that are fighting it out over different issues that then move the issue in, in the wrong direction. I think every one of us wants a safe community. We don't want guns in the hands of people that are going to do harmful things that aren't thinking properly. You know, that's my role as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner is is there are people that shouldn't be having guns in their hand. And, and we need to be addressing that. That's not discrimination. That's that's protecting the community and saying this person poses a risk and we need to make sure that that's, you know, addressed properly. And that's not, you know, necessarily discrimination. So I think it's a really complicated issue. And I'm certainly not just going to stand on, you know, we have our second amendment rights. I, I think that our founding fathers put that in there for a reason. I, I, again, I operate very conservatively. So I think that you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater and you have to look at everything um, object, objectively, but safety is number one. We don't want guns in the hands of people that could do harm and possibly regret it because they aren't mentally fit to be holding a gun, so. What opportunities do you see to work across the aisle on issues important to your constituents? So say that again, what, what? What opportunities do you see to work across the aisle on issues important to your constituents? I mean, I guess in terms of opportunity, I mean, I think there's always opportunity to work collaboratively with someone. You know, I think that's, that's, a, that's, that's just how it should be, I personally think. I think the opportunity should always be there because we're both fighting for the state of Wisconsin residents. Now, whether you're on one side of the aisle or I'm on the other side of the aisle, I think trying to understand each other is what's most important. Um, and, um, you know, for me, I think it's trying to find common ground. Like where do we find the common ground? How do we get what we need for the people of Wisconsin together? And I'm willing to do that. I'm, I'm not always right. And I don't think, it, you know, just working together. What would you like to say to the view, viewing audience as we complete this interview? including any priorities that have not yet been identified? Um, well, I think mental health is important. Obviously, as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, that's a, that's a priority for me because I think, but I think that speaks to the healthcare access that you talked about, helping our kids feel elevated and successful in school, regardless of their, you know, their circumstances. Um, clean water is important to mental health. I mean, if your water's contaminated, how do I know that's not impacting you neurocognitively, um, you know, those sorts of things. So I think I'm going to take any approach to um, any issue through a lens of mental health and making sure that, you know, that that's at the forefront. I think working collaboratively with the other side has a fact is a, is a faction in mental health. It's like, we're not in, we're not in a divorce situation. We are working together for the residents of Wisconsin. So I think, the thing I want people to take away is, you know, I am a fighter. I've always been a fighter. I grew up in a really chaotic environment. I was a teenage mom. I have fought through a lot of things. I'm still going to, you know, I still finished up a degree, you know, last year and I will fight for the residents of Wisconsin because this state means the world to me. And um, I get a little teary eyed because I was born and raised here. And I think Wisconsin is one of the, the best states in the country. And I think that we should stay at the forefront of that, at the heart of um, our country in the Midwest. So thanks. I want to thank Victoria for speaking with us and the beauty, viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. 
I want to remind everyone that election day for those candidates involved in the primary is Tuesday, August 9th, and that the fall election is on Tuesday, November 8th. On behalf of Madison's City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, I thank you for joining us.